And with that link to Fatwa, are you ready? <laughs> I'd like to call to Fatwa Nyanzunda, the Director for Resource-Based Industries at the Department of Trade, Industry and Competition. I usually just call her my sister at the sector desk. <laughs> I read your, your title now, so thank you so much for, for going to give us an update on the Financial Master Plan. Thank you. Over to you, sister. Thank you. Thank you, Janine. Uh, a very good morning to my fellow government officials that are here. And uh, the Labour comrades have learned that word. And uh, the industry and all the manufacturers um, that have turned up uh, for this event and those that are online. Uh, we say to you, good morning. So um, it's very good, yes, to meet again because we never thought uh, this would happen. And yes, it has happened. And um, like Penal has said, we are very working very well together, industry and government and labor. So the master plan, is a way that we should work together as social partners in order for us to achieve the, the common goal of uh, growth. So we've seen success stories uh, in the clothing and textiles, and we've also witnessed uh, success stories in the automotive. And in 2018, um, the industry came to the department to meet uh, with our DG and say that uh, we are facing these challenges. And this was just, just after the investment conference uh, that had happened. So we then started the journey of developing the furniture industry master plan then. It was towards the end of the year, uh, but however, it's still in the middle of our financial year as government. So what am I saying? Uh, we've also worked very well together with Safi uh, right from the beginning, conceptualization as well as establishment when it started. So my presentation looks exactly <laughs> like, I mean, Pedro, how do you do this to me? <laughs> Colleagues, so I'm not going to but then I thought as I was seated, I'm not going to say the same things that panel has been saying. I will look for the different things that are in this presentation that panel has not talked about. And I was like, I'm hoping for my last slide. And guess what he did? He used the same <laughs> for, for the last slide. So yeah, is this cohesion or what? <laughs> We're thinking alike. Yeah. So we really were working together. So I'm going still to utilize my 30 minutes. I am not going to let it go or give it back. So how are we going to do that? I thought maybe we could do a round of introductions of everyone who's here, but then I felt like mm, maybe it will go more. So I'll give preference to my fellow sisters that are running furniture manufacturing companies to introduce themselves. I don't know if the cameras will also be able, they'll be able to be seen. Uh, we do have uh, sisters that are doing fantastic work. Um, and we do have women that have taken up uh, furniture. Is their passion is something that they would want to do the difference when um, Penal mentioned about a home in our homes, in the school, in the workplace. You left the holiday as well. We need to be there. When you go on holiday, we need you to sleep on a bed that has been manufactured by a South African uh, furniture sector, where, regardless of where you go. 
So that's where the export comes. So if you go international, we also want you to see our furniture. We want you to see our brand there, wherever you go on holiday, whether it's in Africa, whether it's global level, let's take those opportunities. So that's another opportunity. Um, another work that we do usually don't talk about, and I've seen uh, also South African women that has taken up in that sector and doing great things. And uh, she is manufacturing caskets. So that's also part of the work uh, that we are doing. And we've supported, we support them. So should I then take, um, before I just give my first and last slide that I'm going to do, get a show of hands of those people that who want to introduce themselves that are here, what they do, very short. Yes. Yes. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Dipo Pagati. I own a company called Stenic Cabinets. We design, manufacture, and install customized kitchen units, um, building cupboards, and office furniture. So our manufacturing factory is based in Weinberg and Santin. Thank you very much. Okay, anyone else who wants to introduce themselves? Oh, okay, yes. Thank you, Tafatwa. Um, I was just holding back because I'm really very newbie into the sector. Um, um, I'm in the furniture, not really furniture, office furniture um, manufacturing not manufacturing, we're based in um, Rostov, and uh, yeah, very, very new. So I'm very excited to be here. And your name? My name is Mary Lou, thank you. My name is Mary Lou Okoko, and that's me, thank you. I'm Bobby Bagalula from Lyrical Furniture Manufacturers. And it's lovely to see ladies, women, um, manufacturing. Um, it's something that, I've, it's been a lonely road for me. I've been in the manufacturing industry since 2006. I manufacture office furniture, um, predominantly, as well as a few other products. And um, we'd like to see more people in the industry being groomed. And I think we should take responsibility as, as a, um, a sector, and we should ensure that we develop communities um, and people, and we, should, um, we, we, we shouldn't just talk the talk, we must walk the talk as Africans. If we want to contribute to our countries, then we have to make sure that our people are skilled, and we don't just, uh, we don't just reap the benefits of their labor. Thank you. Uh, morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I will take this opportunity. Um, I'm from the Department of Higher Education and Training. Uh, last year, we developed a qualification called Furniture Bolsters. There are no learner enrolled in that qualification as yet. There's your opportunity, link with your CETA, get those youngsters, enroll them in your companies, train them. There are qualifications available that you can use. That's just a plea from the department side. Thank you. My name is Ndibin uh, Matibela. I'm the founder and managing director of Ahmed Furnishings. We are a furniture manufacturer only four years old, based in uh, Weinberg, um, Sutton. And um, also when I 
came into the industry in 2018, I thought it was a very long environment. But I'm also uh, happy to say that I have found some gentlemen who have been really um, supportive um, and uh, have helped me and are still helping me. So it's not all that bad. And the gentlemen that are domineering, I must say, uh, are willing to assist. Um, I also want to say that my, my dream um, uh, is that, uh, well, my prayer, firstly, is that we survive 2022. Yes. <laughs> and when we have, that um, perhaps in the next year, like the women in construction have done, we find a grouping and we start a women in uh, manufacturing, but particularly women in furniture manufacturing. It's not easy. So we shouldn't be shy to say that um, what we have accomplished is worth celebrating. And as we do come together and perhaps form that furniture um, manufacturing women organization, we are then able to get better organized and pull in in a very formalized and organized manner um, other aspiring uh, young women who want to come into the industry. Thank you. We have two more. There's one, two, and then we close. Yeah. Hi, good morning. My name is uh, Roman Tsebo. I'm the managing director of uh, Mega Brand Furniture. So we make uh, the furniture, we make it upholstered uh, couches, uh, headboards. I think we are one of the best you know, headboard makers. You know, in counting, you know, in terms of the quality that we produce and also the, the volume. So my vision is to, to be one of the, in terms of the quantity and supplies, mainly because we want to create and supply, you know, um, uh, more headboards and furniture that we can, modern furniture, and try and push in the, the quantities because we have uh, the potential to scale, you know, compared to, to our size, uh, our productivity is very high. And yeah, hoping to you know to grow in that space. Thank you. This one, yeah. Hi. I'm Evin Twana from BEB Talent Associate. Um BEB Talent Associate is a women owned uh, um, company and it has been in existence for more than twenty years. We are accredited with the five bind processing manufacturing center, and we will certainly take up the challenge of, uh, um, you know, seeking accreditation for the the upholsterers. So we are um, starting our um, um, case goods manufacturing in uh, Jamaica, and so our aim is to train and produce. So that's where we are going. Thank you. Um, yeah, I don't think see any more hands, but uh, thank you. At least we have an understanding of who is in the room, and uh, thank you for Tate from uh, uh, Higher Education for joining us today as well. So on the 29th of um, March 2021, um, the government, led by our Minister Ibrahim Patel, Industry and Labour, adopted the version one of the Furniture Master Plan. And then uh, just recently last month, we had our Executive Oversight Committee and uh, deliberated on the version two of the Furniture Industry Master Plan. And we can safely say that there is alignment with all the social uh, parties that are involved. So on the 28th as well of September, the, uh, we presented to the DTIC Parliamentary Portfolio Committee, and there was a delegation from industry as well as labor and uh, the DTIC so, and government. And 
just uh, as well on the 30th, we also did a, gave a progress report to the master plan steering committee that is chaired by the presidency. So we have been developing, I think, just over 17 master plans as a country, and uh, the DTIC is leading on six of those master plans, and the furniture master plan was also presented at that um, uh, body. And just to ensure that we are inclusive and also we also continue to just uh, educate our manufacturers or tell them what is happening, I also made a presentation at the Etiquini uh, Furniture um, uh, Cluster. All right, so this is the road that we have taken and uh, since 2018, like I said, and here we are, September 2022, we are ready to sign off the master plan. Uh, we are just putting this in a version that is shorter and not too long and ensure that we will soon be getting a date and signing off the master plan. So the master plan does not belong to government. I didn't want to do this presentation. Next time it will be labor or industry presenting the master plan because it's a social compact or giving the update. So we are saying that we are ready to sign and it's just short of getting the dates, planning and getting uh, in people's calendars and then we can sign off. And after that, we will then send it for approval by cabinet. Um, most likely is the presentation that you have seen from Safi. Safi. But what I, where I want to put in emphasis is on the localization, our pillar number one. Pillar number one is looking at localization. I would also want to put in emphasis on the improving the raw materials. We're just not saying the shortage. Yes, there was a shortage and there is currently a shortage, but how do we diversify our raw material and how do we localize some of the raw material? And we are also speaking on the skills uh, improvement and you can hear about that qualification that has been developed. We are, we have been working uh, with the CETA, with the industry, with higher education to also develop another qualification which is furniture design and as, gov and as the DTIC we've been working with the industry and the stakeholders uh, since 2015. 2014, yes, we've been having the annual furniture design competition. It recently closed last week, and we will be adjudicating next week, I think, uh, sometime and uh, shortlisting. We've now built, I think we can say confidently, we've built a pool of furniture designers that are in the country that are designing great designs and these designs need to find their ways to the customer somehow whether it's local or international um okay on the i've talked about the governance of the furniture master plan so we will have five pillars 11 task teams some of those task teams uh Peno has already talked to we have an executive oversight committee that is chaired by the Minister of Trade and Industry, and then we still report to the Department of Monitoring and Evaluation uh, uh, Steering Committee that is also chaired by the presidency. We are saying that this document is a live document, so we're not going to say this is what we agreed 2022. We are going to stick to that, even when the environment does not speak to that, even when the customer needs have changed. It has to keep on evolving, and hence there is need for us to be flexible as we are implementing the master plan. And also, once we have planned, we have said that this is what we need to do. There is need for action. We need to come up with actionable uh, implementation activities 
in the 11 testings that we can then point to say this is what we have achieved. Um, the task team that I would want to speak to, uh, there is that task team 1.4, uh, Pemo spoke about it as well. It is key for us. The reason why we cannot say today that uh, we are currently producing in this country 20,000 beds a day because we don't have that information. So if we say that, we may not be saying it correctly. So we need to be to come to a stage as an industry where we can clearly say that this is where we are with the numbers and this is where we would want to go. And then we can track that to say that, yes, we were importing so much, but now we've reduced the gap. We are able to cover that. And we can say we were exporting so much, but we've increased by such, such a percentage. And we can say we were in this market, but now we have added certain markets that we, we can go to. So the work that will be done under the task team 1.4 is very key. And when that work has, has started, we also want all of us to then contribute to that. I'll also speak on the task team 2.1. Uh, that is the Furniture Challenge Fund. Craig is gonna talk more about it, but what I just want to say is that currently we have 420 million in the pot, but we need to grow that pot and we need to look at innovative way of how do we grow that. So we're looking at retailers, how are you going to participate into the pot so that we can start to manufacture more. We're also looking at raw material uh, manufacturers, uh, at, at least one has uh, given that 20 million. So 200 million was from IDC, 200 million from DTIC, and then 20 million from the industry. So we need to grow that pot. We want uh, the question that we always get glued about, where are the commitments? So we need the commitment to then say, us as a company, we are going to do one, two, three, four. Or as a collective, we are going to do one, two, three, four in order for us to make this master plan a success. So we need, we still want those. We've been meeting with uh, various uh, stakeholders as well as companies. We continue to do that and gun for more commitments so that we can then take move to where we would want to be. Um, I think yeah, those were the test teams that I needed to emphasize on. Okay, all right. So currently these are the commitments that we have. My commitment seven is actually the city of Cape Town work that uh, they have committed and will be spending, uh, I think, a shy of a million rand in developing the manufacturers. We also got a commitment uh, from PG Bison. We've got a commitment from Safi, FX Group, uh, FPN and CETA, as well as the Bravo Group. So we need to more commitments in the furniture master plan. The achievements, I think Peno has spoken to all of them. Um, and then my last slide. Uh, the reason why I came back to this is when we started um, the roads to developing the master plan, I quoted this to say that if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. And let us start to continue going together as we have started the journey. And it is important uh, when I sit with manufacturers, they always say, yes, it's very nice what you're telling about and the initiatives are very nice, but we want the orders. So we need the orders there to come to our factories. We need the orders to come to our manufacturers. So how do we get those orders? We need to reduce well, we can say we need to reduce on the imports, right? We need to start to preach the gospel of local is lacquer 
Are you hearing me? I am <laughs> preaching the gospel proudly South African. We need to start to create that brand of South African furniture because some they can say, oh, this furniture is from way away. I'm not I'm going to name the countries, but you know those countries that you, you name say, ah, I like that. So we also need to create that brand, the South African furniture brand, that when someone sees it from afar, they know that couch is from South Africa, or that chair is South Africa. And we need to educate our consumers. We know how do we keep with the shifting consumer taste. We need to keep up with their taste. We need to, because they are faced with so much opportunities they don't even need to go to the shop. They just have it right there on their fingertip. They can buy whatever they want, and it can come from wherever it is being produced. And they are willing, some of them, to pay the price for that. So how do we keep that? How do we keep up with the shifting consumer And can we progress towards that so that we get the orders? that uh, the, um, the manufacturers always telling me about that. As long as we don't have the orders, we are not doing anything, we need the orders. But at the same time, we also need to produce something that the consumer wants, right? So, and then at the end, you can hire, you can put, they outside your gates say that we are hiring. Why? Because the orders are coming. And why? Because the consumers are buying. And why? Because we are keeping up with the taste. So these things that I'm speaking about has already started happening. We do have amongst some of the companies that are here, they've managed to beat China. The chair that was being imported from China, they've beat it on competitive price, they've beat it on turnaround time, and they are supplying that, and they've increased the number of people, hired more people. So this is these are the success stories that we need to hear. These are the stories that when now we are working on that task team, we are able to confidently say, stand in front of you and say that we used to import so many chairs, but right now, we have reduced that number and we are beating a China or we are beating whatever country where those chairs were coming from. We are beating them and we've increased the orders that the manufacturers are looking for. So thank you very much. Thank you so much. I was just going to ask Ungama to, um, to include the fatwa name under the hijacking section of your presentation. But thank you so much for, uh, for uplifting us with that good news story. I think it's very important to tell the story. Yes, yes. It gives me great pleasure um, to move swiftly on and introduce you to a face we all know very well, Greg. Greg Bull, a consultant to the IDC, to talk about the, the challenge fund that forms a part of the Furniture Master Plan. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, as Janine was saying, I've been asked by the IDC to help them fill their pipeline for this um, Furniture Challenge Fund. So, I'm going to be presenting a bit of background to the fund, purpose and application of the fund, criteria surrounding the fund, the structure and what the fund is offering to manufacturers, the application process and contact information. So there's two graphs in the master plan which I think demonstrate why we as an industry needed a master plan or need a master plan and the support that has been offered by the Challenge Fund. If we look at the graph on the left, um, that, is, that shows us the index of physical volume of production um, coming out of our factories, our furniture factories. Um, 2019 is the base year, and we grew up to 2008. Then, I think everybody will remember there was a financial crisis, 
the credit tech to just come in, the national credit tech to just come in. And then there was a steady decline until 2014. Um, the industry grew again. Um, and then in 2014, we had Ellerines going out. I think we lost probably 500 stores at the time to the Ellerine failure. Um, and then 2015, 2016, there were other retail restructurings, and I think we lost another 250 stores. Um, so the 2020 decrease is obviously as a result of the lockdown. So if you have a look at the graph on the right, talks about employment in the industry. And I think to a certain extent that mirrors the index of production. So in 2002, between the formal and informal sector of the industry, we employed 58,500 people. Sadly, by 2020, this had dropped down by 51% down to 28,700. So we've lost a lot of jobs in the industry. And um, just to quote, when Gama fresh off the press, we need to find a path back to manufacturing. So the purpose of the fund is to support furniture manufacturers in the various sectors of our industry. So we talk about bed and mattress, upholstery, case goods, uh, kitchen, built-in cupboards, and school and office furniture. So these are the manufacturers that we're going to be looking at to support through the fund. The fund is looking for improved competitiveness, and this is a drum that Minister Patel has been uh, beating now in most of the meetings that, that we've attended. Um, part of the fund is what's going to be looking at surviving economic downturn, increased localization of production activities within the value chain, in other words, import replacement, um, promoting economic inclusion, to support equitable economic growth and maintaining and increasing employment in our industry. So the funds can be applied for capital equipment to increase capacity, modernization of plant, and an upgrade to meet quality requirements. So we're not really looking at the fund to, to, to fund vehicles or um, to fund retail or anything like that. It's mainly for capital equipment, plant and equipment. Also, working capital needs can be, can be uh, supported there. And then process and system improvements. So efficiency and productivity optimizations, industry quality certifications and standards. And in this, um, I think uh, Pim will also have spoke about standards. So if we're starting to look at introducing standards, these standards will apply to imported product but whatever standards are applicable have to be applicable also to local production. And then environmental standard adherence as well. So I think the process and system improvements really speak to the long-term competitiveness of our industry. Where I think, I think we'll probably all agree that to a certain extent, we can actually improve on our competitiveness. So the fund criteria, the first one is economic merit. So once the application has come in, it will be subject to the IDC due diligence process to assess economic viability. And that process will be very similar to any other process that would be followed by other commercial banks. Sustainability, the key areas there would be financial, marketing, technical, and environmental. So we need to tick those boxes. Regional focus, Manufacture must take place in South Africa. Import or export or import replacement. Um, we would like to see manufacturers um, gearing up for exports and competing with imports. Jobs, new jobs, but also to save existing jobs. Types of enterprise is we're looking at startups, expansions, expansionary acquisitions. Um, and there's no limit to the size of the business that, that, that we would be looking at. Um, we would like to encourage SMEs to, to help them grow, but as I say, there is no limit um, to the size of the business. Um, if, 
the fair amount is a bit um, is about less than a million rand for the application. Then I think you would be referred to other government agencies like um, Development uh, Bank, uh, Business Department of Small Business Development, CEDA, and those subs. But um, I think that could still come to you and uh, be referred. Um, compliance. SA legislation, we will only support companies that are legally compliant in the country, compliant with labor laws, bogging council regulations, um, SARS regulations, um, Workmen's Com, Consumer Council, and all those good things. Um, BE requirement, we're looking for businesses that will, over a period of three years, get to at least the level four. And um, there are support mechanisms within the RDC that could help and advise on how to, to achieve these, this level of, of um, compliance. Retrenchments, we don't want to have any retrenchments during the period of the facility. And from a developmental point of view, we be encouraging participation from black industrialists, women, youth, or people with disabilities but the fund isn't limited to those groupings of people. So the fund structure and offering. As Tefato was saying, um, the fund is actually a partnership between the DTRC and the RDC. The DTRC has allocated 200 million from their MCEP funds and the RDC has also come to the party and allocated a further 200 million. So there's the 400 million coming from the government side. Um, when, a, when a company or entity applies for, for funding, it, the fund will be split 50-50 between the RDC and the DTRC, but the fund is actually administered by the RDC. So all the applications will go through and the processes will go through the RDC. And it's important when we talk about that 50-50, you'll understand now. So from a pricing point of view, the 50% portion of the loan from the DTRC carries a 0% interest rate. Um, and the other 50% from the RDC carries a prime minus 0.2% interest rate. So if you're looking at a blended average at the moment at 9.75%, sorry, it's prime less 0.2. So if you're looking at prime, at the moment at 9.75 and you blend the two, you come out somewhere around 4.8% interest rate. That interest rate is subject to risk grading though. Um, it is a localization incentive that's been offered by the DTRC as well. And if you source 50, more than 50% 50 of your raw materials from South African sources, then the lower of 20% of the DTRC loan or 2 million rand may be converted into a grant after a 24 month period. So in other words, um, it's actually then up to 2 million Rand can be converted into a grant that doesn't get repaid. We're still looking at the tax aspect of that and we hope to get back to you um, sometime soon on that one. The term of the loan from a working capital or revolving credit, there will be a 48 month term and for capital equipment, 84 months, seven years. There's also uh, business support that can be utilized. Um, as I mentioned, maybe something like um, the BE consulting, maybe lean manufacturing consulting or things like that, that would be provided at maximum of 15% of the total funding capped at 3 million Rand. So that is available then from the fund as well. The application process, we, we've tried to keep it fairly simple and streamlined. So what, we, what we're looking at is we're asking for an expression of interest. Um, if you haven't received any of those forms, you're welcome to, to, to contact us and I'll give you the contact details now. Um, so when, and with that expression of interest, uh, we would like to get the latest financial statements um, and management accounts to have a look at as well. Um, and we'll take about a week to review that and we'll get back to you to tell you that we might need further information to pass this initial stage or sorry, um, 
your application or your submission doesn't satisfy the funding criteria. If it does go further, then it gets recommended that it goes to the IDC for their due diligence process to start. So that would be at the end of week one, if all the paperwork is in order. Then once the due diligence process starts, the IDC will be calling for a lot more information from you. And then that period we would be hoping would be in the order of about five weeks. Um, at the end of the five weeks, it, uh, either you will have passed the due diligence criteria and you would be recommended to go forward to the EXCO for approval for, of the loan, or, or you might not pass that um, due diligence criteria. If you go forward to EXCO approval, executive approval, there again, you might be rejected at the last stage, or if it is approved, we're looking at about two weeks. So we're trying to stick to about an eight week turnaround time for this fund. So you can either contact myself, the IDC has given me an email address, and Nicole here as well. I've been working with Nicole. Nicole is the business development manager for textiles and wood products at the RDC. So Nicole and myself are working quite closely together. So if you need any further information, you're welcome to contact us at those email addresses. That's, uh, that's about it on the phone. I don't know if there are any questions. Thank you so much, Greg. Oh, there is a question. I'm Walter from Covered Value. Yeah. My question would be, do you require surety for the application? I'll leave that to my RDC uh, colleagues. Good morning. Uh, yes, Walter, we would require guarantees from the shareholders. But when we look at the funding proposal, our main focus of our investment is not necessarily on the quality of security, but the quality of the business plan. But security will be a requirement for the funding. Thank you very much. No other questions? Yes? If I can understand correctly, the funding is not yet in place. This, uh, it's, 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 a, it's an initiative that you guys are launching, or is it in place? It's in place. It's in okay. Place. And how many people have you already approved? Mm -hmm. Just a four cents. Oh. We haven't yet. Sorry. We haven't yet got any approvals. We've got a pipeline of. 17 applications which we're in the process of reviewing the fund was only launched about three weeks ago it was the letter was sent out to industry on the 9th of september so it's only two and a half three weeks old now three weeks but we're excited to get a few approvals on our book very shortly 